this video is going to go over some basic genetics um, and what we're going to start with is just a review of some of the terminology and then we'll also do um, basic Punnett squares as well. So on a strand of DNA um, there are many small segments that are called genes And uh, each gene is a sequence of DNA that's going to code for a protein. And different people have different genes, uh, and alternate forms of the gene uh, are termed alleles. At the most basic level, there are dominant alleles, and there are recessive alleles. A dominant allele is actually going to mask the expression or hide the expression of a recessive allele. Uh, so when you look at a person, when you're looking at the physical characteristics of an individual, uh, that is termed the phenotype. So the phenotype of an individual is an expression of the dominant alleles that they have. So what you see when you look at somebody is their dominant alleles. The recessive alleles are there, they're just hidden. They're not going to manifest in the physical appearance of the person because the dominant alleles will mask those recessive alleles. But they are both present. All of the alleles that an individual has uh, are termed the genotype of the individual. So the genotype is the genetic makeup of the individual and the phenotype is the physical manifestation of that genotype. So physical genes. Physical, pheno, physical manifestation, geno, genotype means genes. Dominant alleles are typically indicated when we're writing them out by an uppercase letter. So if we're talking about pea plants, uh, Mendel studied a lot of pea plants, in pea plants tallness, the tall plant, uh, the allele for tallness is dominant to the allele for shortness. So tallness would be indicated by an uppercase T and the lowercase t would be the recessive allele, so the, the short allele. So you typically use the same letter um, for that trait, for the height of the plant, but you use a, an uppercase one for the dominant allele and a lowercase one for the recessive allele. So most traits end up being controlled by two alleles. And so if you have two alleles, there are three possible combinations for how that can work out with these dominant and recessive alleles. So you could have two dominant alleles, you could have two recessive alleles, or you could have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. If you have two of the same allele, if you have a duplicate of the same allele, that is termed homozygous. Homo means same, like homosexual, homozygous. If it's two of the dominant allele, then it's homozygous dominant. If it's two of the recessive allele, it's homozygous recessive. If you have two different alleles for that trait, so if you have a dominant allele and a recessive allele, that is termed heterozygous. So hetero meaning different, like heterosexual, different. So heterozygous, you have two different alleles. Homozygous, you have duplicates of the same allele, but it could be either both dominant or both recessive. Now when you look at these genotypes, the genotypes are the alleles, the phenotypes are the appearance of those plants. So this genotype, the homozygous dominant for a pea plant, would be a tall pea plant. The homozygous recessive allele combination would be a short pea plant. And then the heterozygous plant would be tall because it has a dominant allele. So that dominant allele masks the expression of the recessive allele. So the plant that you see is tall. So if you see a tall plant, it could have two different um, genotypes. It could have two different genetic makeups. If you see a short plant, you know that it has to be a homozygous recessive because in that trait, which is controlled by this very simple um, type of genetics, if it's a homozygous recessive, it's going to be the short plant, and that's the only way you can have a short plant. So this kind of gets into an important um, characteristic as far as genetic diseases. So there are some genetic diseases that are carried on a dominant allele, and there are some genetic diseases that are carried on a recessive allele. If they're carried on a dominant allele, 
they're called um, dominant genetic disorders. If they're carried on recessive alleles, they're called recessive genetic disorders. So if you have a dominant uh, genetic disorder, then any individual that has that dominant allele has that disease. So Huntington's disease is an example of that in your textbook. So an individual that's homozygous dominant or an individual that's heterozygous would have Huntington's disease because they have that dominant allele. The homozygous recessive individual would not have the disease in a dominant genetic disease uh, genotype. Now, if you're talking about a recessive genetic disorder, to have a recessive genetic disorder, you have to have two of those recessive alleles. So the only individuals that would have a recessive genetic disorder are the homozygous recessive individuals. If you are homozygous dominant, you don't have the disorder. And if you're heterozygous, you don't have the disorder um, because you've got one normal allele. However, the heterozygous individual does have that abnormal recessive allele that they could pass on to their offspring. So they're considered silent carriers for the disease if it's a recessive genetic disorder uh, because they've got an allele they could pass on. So if they had a child with another individual that was heterozygous, potentially some of the offspring could have the disease. And we'll do a Punnett square here in a minute. They'll kind of explain why that's the case. Okay, so let's do some Punnett squares. Let me clean off the board. All right, so Punnett squares let us cross two parents and predict what the offspring are going to look like and the genotypes they're going to have. So let's talk about pea plants because we've been discussing that. So remember in pea plants, tallness is dominant to shortness. So the uppercase T is the allele for tallness. The lowercase T is the allele for shortness, the recessive allele. So if you cross uh, an individual that is homozygous dominant for tallness, so that would be the two alleles that that parent would have with an individual who is homozygous recessive for shortness. So you've got a short pea plant and a tall pea plant. You're going to mate them and see what the offspring could look like. So you draw a square. And then in the square, you've got the uh, one parent on top, the other parent on the side. You combine the alleles. So one offspring um, would have that allele combination. The next offspring, you would bring in this square. These go here, and these go here. Because remember that each in each allele, um, you're going to pass off one of those to your, to your child, to your offspring. So you've got two, and you're going to donate one to your child. Your spouse has two, and they're going to donate one to the child. So that way the child has two, um, but they get one from each parent. So notice that when you cross this homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive, um, this, this cross, you end up with all heterozygous plants. So the phenotype for all of these offspring would be tall. All of these plants would appear to be tall. But the genotype is that they're all heterozygous. Okay. Now, if you crossed a heterozygous plant with another heterozygous plant, okay, so let's do that then you're going to get a slightly different pattern. So here um, in the first offspring, you've got a homozygous dominant genotype. Then the one down here, you've got heterozygous. In this offspring, you've got another heterozygous individual. And then the last one, you've got two homozygous recessive, so two uh, recessive alleles. So if you're talking about the genotypes of the offspring, you've got one homozygous dominant to two heterozygous to one homozygous recessive. So the genotypes are half of them are heterozygous, 25% are homozygous recessive, and 25% are homozygous dominant. If we're talking about phenotypes, 
Then out of these, three of them are going to be tall. So 75% would be tall. And one is going to be short. So 25% would be short. So the phenotypes don't always match the genotypes because remember this heterozygous individual, the way they look, their phenotype looks just like the dominant individual. So that's why you've got the phenotype, you've got 75%, so three out of four uh, are, are gonna appear to be tall and one, 25%, one out of four is gonna be short. So if we were talking about a genetic disorder that was a recessive genetic disorder, then one out of four of the individuals would have the disorder uh, two out of four, so half, would be silent carriers, and one out of four would be perfectly normal. If we're talking about a dominant genetic disorder, then all three of these would have the disorder, and the recessive individual would be the only one that did not have the disorder.